You see, what Jesus had been doing the whole time through his ministry was showing you don't have to wait until you die to have a relationship with the Father. I have a relationship with the Father right now. And the Spirit of the living God is moving through me right now. And so his answer to Martha was this. Jesus said to her, I am, that's present tense, right? I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, that is present tense, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he says this, do you believe this? And then her answer to him is a repeat of what she's already said. She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. That means someday you're going to make this happen. And he's like, dude, why are you waiting on a day when I'm here? Because she actually wasn't sure what the promise was because all she had before this was a promise of the promise. And what Jesus is telling Martha is the promise of the promise has been fulfilled. Now it's time for the promise to be fulfilled. The promise of the promise was that the Messiah would show up, right? And then the promise itself was that the Messiah would bring us life. So she's there, and all she has is someday faith. Friends, I want to tell you, that the church of Jesus Christ, who, who has been living in New Testament times for 2,000 years, is plagued with Old Testament faith. That Jesus Christ, the promise, has shown up, and he is the resurrection, and he is the life, and the huge majority of Christianity, the only thing we have faith for is someday. We have to be willing to change that. Guys, even... I'm just going to submit this to you and humbly submit this to you and tell you this, that I, I think that the Bible says clearly that the people of faith who believed in God did not get to even go to heaven until the Messiah showed up and set them free out of a special place in hell that's called Abraham's bosom. Like, okay, what? You just lost me. Now, I want you to, kind of, I want you to try and keep track with me, and I'm going to show you what the Bible says with this. Abraham's bosom is something that Jesus Christ mentions himself in Luke, in the book of Luke. It's only mentioned one time, and it's, it's mentioned in what everybody calls the parable of, of the rich man and the poor man, okay? Which I'm, I'm about to confront that because I don't believe it's a parable at all. I think it's an actual true story. But with that said, he talks about this place that is called Abraham's bosom that is literally in hell, and it's where all the believers are sitting waiting. They are not tormented. That's why it's called Abraham's bosom. Let me just tell you what. In order to say Abraham's bosom literally means Abraham's lay down or Abraham's kickback, the place where you kick back with Abraham. So what are you doing kicking back with Abraham? They're waiting for the Messiah to show up because here's the deal. The faith that they had was someday. Now, I'm going to show you this. You guys say, okay, I'm sorry, Pastor. I just think you're you're high. I'm going to show you this is what the Bible says, Luke chapter 16. And there was a certain rich man. Now, does Jesus say, now I say a parable unto you? He's like, there was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared so beautifully every day. And there was a certain beggar whose name was Lazarus who laid at the gate full of sores. Guys, does anybody know a real person in the Bible by the name of Lazarus? Yes. All right. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and he was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, the rich man, being in torments, and he saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So apparently, in hell, in the center of the earth, there was a place of torment, but there was also a place reserved where there was no torment for people of faith that are waiting for the promise of the Messiah to come and set them free as captives. Somebody who's going to have to take the keys to death and hell away from the devil and unlock them and take them to the Father. 
Okay? Now it says, it says this, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and see Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he might dip the tip of, my, the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received good tidings, likewise Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you is a great gulf fixed. There's an an unpassable place between us. And then he says this. Um, Then he said, and he says, therefore, I, therefore, we cannot pass to you cannot pass to us, and we cannot go to you. And then he said, Well, I pray you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers who that he might testify unto them, lest they come into this terrible place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one raised from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, even though one rises from the dead. Has anybody ever heard of a man, of a man named Lazarus who rose from the dead? I think everybody in hell knew that Lazarus was about to be risen from the dead. I think the buzz was already out, the word was already there, and everybody knew what was going to happen. That the people on the bad side of hell and the people on the good side of hell all knew, man, the Messiah is going to call you out of here. Okay? Now, oh, you didn't know this was in the Bible. People of faith were still captives in hell until Jesus showed up to set them free. And that's why when he died, he didn't go to heaven. He went to hell. Jesus said that he would spend three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Not in the presence of the Father, but in the heart of the earth. And when he died, he did not go to heaven. He went to hell. Why did he go to hell? Well, guys, we know that Jesus went to hell, and this is what he did. He showed up in Abraham's bosom, and he personally spoke to every single one of those people and said, this is how the promises have been fulfilled. The Bible says in the the book of 1 Peter that Jesus went to preach unto the spirits in prison. That's 1 Peter 3.19. The use of the word spirits and not souls in this passage indicates that these were not unsaved. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15 says having that Jesus Christ has disarmed principalities and powers, that's demonic spirits, and he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. That he went to hell and rubbed their nose in his power. Okay? While all these people who had been waiting, some of them for thousands of years, were like, we knew this was going to happen, man. It's finally, finally happened. As Jesus told the woman, after he had resurrected from the dead, so he's been gone for three days, he tells her in John chapter 20, verse 17, don't touch me, I have not yet seen the Father. That's what Jesus said. So he had not been in heaven. He had literally been in hell. And the reason why he went to hell was to set the captives free. Because all they had was someday faith. That was all that was offered to them. They weren't offered anything else. John chapter 24, verse 29, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have seen, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. On the very morning of the day that he's saying that, he is sending the people who had not seen and believed to heaven. He's talking about those people. Now, whenever he rises from the dead, now that he has sent all the captives and set them free and sent them to heaven and taken away the keys to death and hell, he he literally, the woman comes to him and says, he says, do not touch me. I have not yet seen the Father. Yet a few hours later on the same exact night, he tells Thomas, touch me. Right? So now, whenever Thomas is actually touching him, he tells him, he says, you know what? It's cool, man that you see and believe, but blessed are those who have believed and they hadn't seen. Why? Because he had been preaching to those people for three days. And now he's president of their fan club.